so followed by our previous video on electrical conduction we look at more in detail on electronic and ionic conduction in this video so what do you mean by electronic conduction this is what we saw already a little bit of it that is motion of electrically charged particles in response to the applied field uh, current arises from the flow of electrons in electronic conduction whereas when you talk about ionic conduction the net motion of charged ions produces current so this is the prominent difference between electronic and ionic conduction so coming to electronic conduction more in depth all conductors semiconductors and many of the insulating materials show electronic conductivity that is strongly based on the number of electrons available to participate in the process so this is what we saw in the previous video where we had sigma is equals n q mu where n is the number of charge carriers that is the number of electrons available to participate however not all the electrons in every atom will be acting or will get accelerated in the presence of an electric field so what happens here exactly is when you take an atom there are so many electrons both at the core as well as the electrons which are called as valence electrons these valence electrons are the ones which really plays a huge role in terms of electrical conduction so let us have a look at it step by step the these electrons valence electrons are the prime charge carriers we know that electrons are the prime charge carriers electrons in metals are arranged in shells and subshells according to pauli's exclusion principle so just to recollect what is pauli's exclusion principle we could see that no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers hope you remember about the principal quantum number azimuthal magnetic spin and spin quantum number so based on pauli's exclusion principle it is said that only two electrons may exist in the same orbital and these two electrons also must have opposite spin that is the electron may have same principal quantum number and azimuthal quantum number but then they should have a different electronic spin this is the idea so now in metals many electrons will have same state of energy and th this leads to the energy band we saw about this energy band in the previous lecture as well we have been talking about the conduction and valence band and how the energy band gap varies for metals semiconductors and insulators here the electrons that are not involved in the bonding remain in the core band whereas the electrons that forms the electron gas they form, they enter into the valence band so what is going to happen is the unfilled orbitals form higher energy bands which are called as the conduction band so now it should be clear what forms the valence and conduction band so this conduction band gives the metals in the ability to conduct the free electrons so this is what happens actually the valence electrons are the electrons which are roaming and as we know for example if we take a copper wire the mobile electrons just passes through the copper wire and this is mainly because of the availability of the conduction and valence band where the unfilled orbitals form higher energy bands which is called as a conduction band and this conduction band gives the metals in alloy the ability to freely conduct the electrons that is because you know half of the conduction band is also already filled and you remember the level of fermi level from the previous video where it was in the uh, conducting material and how the fermi level was in between the band gap of the insulating and the semiconducting materials right 
So based on this again coming to the same band gap structure you could see that the narrow band gap of around 2 electron volt is applicable for a semiconductor and for the conductor it has been discussed already we know very well whereas for insulator it is going to be even more higher say greater than 4 electron volt. So look at the position of Fermi level in all these three cases. You could see metals have high conductivities because large number of free electrons have been excited into the empty states that is the conduction band above the Fermi energy. So this makes metal to be having a higher conducti conductivity value and these are very good conductors. Next moving on to conduction in ionic materials as I already stated in ionic materials it is the ions that move that is the conduction happens because of the movement of entire ions because you know in, con in these kind of materials the energy band gap is too high that is too large the electrons are not able to enter the conduction band as what happened with the case of metal. So here most ionic materials behave as insulators that means there should be a change in the mobility value as well. So when we talk about mobility for conducting materials as we saw in the previous lecture the mobility was given by mu is equals n number of charge carriers multiplied by q charge on each carrier multiplied by mu which is the mobility whereas here and there the mobility was equal to drift velocity divided by the applied electric field but in the case of ions you could see ionic conductivity you could see that the mobility depends on the valence of the ion multiplied by the electronic charge multiplied by the diffusion constant divided by the Boltzmann constant into absolute temperature. Here you could see in conductors it was the drift velocity that was taken into account and here in ionic materials diffusion constant is taken into account. So the mobility is of many orders of magnitude lower than that of the mobility of electrons and since the mobility is very much low it should definitely affect the conductivity as well and here the conductivity is given as number of charge carriers multiplied by the valence of the ion multiplied by charge on each carrier multiplied by the mobility. So you could see there is a new term pitching in that is nothing but the valence of the ion. Now the role of impurities and vacancies as far as a pure conductor was concerned we were not worried about the impurities vacancies etc but here since it is going to be mostly say metal oxides as far as insulator is concerned or something co in co combination with metals we could see that the role of impurities vacancies and these things matter a lot so impurities and vacancies increases the conductivity vacancies are necessary for substitutional type of crystal structures and impurities can diffuse and help to carry the current high temperatures increases conductivity so the effect of temperature also matters here because it is going to affect the rate of diffusion so here we could see some few examples based on whatever we were talking in the previous slide some examples of ionically conductive oxides could be yttria stabilized zirconia y is it s as is seen in the as it is seen in the graph here when you plot bet, between ionic conductivity conductivity and temperature you could see that yttria stabilized zirconia the ionic conductivity increases with increase in temperature at the same time when you add titanium dioxide into it or samarium doped cerium oxide so by doping bringing in the impurities again you are able to improve the ionic conductivity as we discussed in the previous slide 
Another one, this, this particular material, yttria stabilized zirconia is mainly used as a solid electrolyte in SOFCs, solid oxide fuel cells. Whereas lithium cobalt oxide is used as an electrolyte in lithium batteries. In lithium batteries, it is lithium cobalt oxide. Okay, there is one more thing that is, mo that is one more uh, thing which is even more interesting. You could see Although most ceramic materials behave as electrical insulators, if you properly engineer the point defects in the ceramics, it is possible to convert them into semiconductors. Yes, so what does it mean? If you take an insulator, you possibly alter it, engineer it by incorporating some defects to it. Then you could or uh, that is adding a dopant or you engineer the point defects which is already available in the material you could be able to shift the band gap position that is the conduction and valence band position thus converting the insulator to a semiconducting type material here is the best example for it ITO indium tin oxide this is a prominently used material everywhere it is a transparent, transparent conductive oxide used in solar cells as well as it finds application in touch screen displays so here as seen in the diagram on the left, you could see this is reported by Gupta et al. Uh, in thin solid films in the year 1989. So here you could see when, uh, when you have undoped indium oxide, the energy gap between the conduction and valence band is higher. But at the same time, when we dope tin into it, the band gap is being reduced. This is obvious because tin can replace some 3 plus indium ions and this tin has tin is 4 plus so automatically there is a change there is an upset and it becomes upset in the insulating indium oxide material and thus it becomes a conducting material so the there are electrons in the conduction band as well as it could be evidenced in the uh, image so, in general, physicists would say this, most conductors are not transparent. It is because they don't have energy ga gap between the conduction and valence band. This ITO is quite interesting. It is just conducting as well as transparent and this property is what makes ITO more attractive. So, this is the role of ITO in touch screens. Just we'll have a glimpse of it. So, touch screens can be both resistive based on both resistive as well as capacitive technologies so here ITO where is it used means you could see that there is a flexible top layer which is followed by a thin layer of ITO as seen in the image on the right side there is an air gap and then another layer of ITO so a touch is detected when the flexible top layer is pressed down to contact the lower layer so now what should happen Obviously, the other things, the wires and the positioning, determination, everything has to be there, connected already. I am just going to talk about ITO only here. If ITO layers are not uniform, as you see, we have ITO bo on both the sides. Then, the resistance will not vary linearly. So, this is going to be a problem with the uh, touch screen display. So, the quality of ITO matters a lot. Fine. This is a task for you. Explain the role of ionically conductive oxides in lithium ion batteries. I have been talking about SOFCs and I discussed about yttria stabilized zirconia and then ITO, which is little special. Now, the task for you is to explain the role of ionically conductive oxides in lithium ion batteries. Fine, I will come up again with the topic conducting polymers. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.